video, I'm going to show you some important grammar settings that you can set as defaults in Microsoft Word to ensure that your writing is accurate and professional. I'm also going to show you how to use Microsoft Editor, an intelligent writing assistant tool that comes with premium features in both Word and Outlook when you have a Microsoft 365 subscription. I'll also show you how you can download Microsoft Editor as a browser extension so that you can use it online. If you're doing things like LinkedIn posts or maybe you use Gmail or Google Docs, you'll be able to take advantage of Microsoft Editor, not just the spelling and grammar checks, but also the grammar refinements that we're going to take a look at today. I also created a business writing tips quick reference guide for you. It includes a lot of common grammar mistakes that people make in both business and resume writing and how to avoid them. I'll include a link in the description below this video and when you sign up for my email list, you can get that grammar writing tips for free. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this content and you want to see more videos from me. Let's get started. Before we take a look at Microsoft Editor and the grammar refinements that you can check using this tool, I want to show you some quick things in the actual grammar settings themselves in Microsoft Word. Let's go up to File, down to Options, and click on Proofing. Now come down here where it says Writing Style, Grammar and Refinements, and click on Settings. This is going to open up the grammar settings window and you'll notice here there are a lot of different areas including grammar and we scroll all the way down there's conciseness formality these are all of the items that are going to get scanned through in your document if you have these turned on and checked when you open microsoft editor it's going to go through all of these things and make suggestions based on these so if there are any items on this list that aren't as important to you you can come out here and uncheck them but there are a few items out here that i want Want to make sure that you do have checked and enabled and these are under the punctuation conventions the first one is the oxford comma you want to make sure that you have that box checked in professional business writing when you have a sentence and you have a list of items with more than three items a lot of the times that last item you'll say and um, and you'll list the last item and people often forget to put that comma after uh, right before that last item. So that's called the Oxford comma. And when you check this box, that means that the editor will check for that. And if you've missed that in your document, it will notify you and let you know. The other two items are quick items that I just want to show you. One is the punctuation required with quotes. We want to come over here, drop down and set that to inside. This will catch if you have been typing in your document and you close your quotes and you accidentally put punctuation marks after the quotation mark ends. This will check for that and make sure that you are using the punctuation marks inside of those quotation marks. And then the second thing is the space between sentences. We're going to drop down and make sure that that's just one space. This makes sure this will check your document and it makes the white space uh, look more accurate in your document if you have accidentally put two spaces after a sentence or after punctuation, the grammar editor will check for that for you. All right, I'm going to click OK to save these settings. And then real quickly, I just want to show you some of the autocorrect options. If you come up here, these are some of the default things that you're used to in Microsoft Word as you're typing. If you have the caps lock on or something, you notice that the program will automatically fix that for you. And this is where you can set up some of those defaults in case you want to make changes based on your work preferences. And then often if you have a word that you misspell a lot or a name, you can actually add it to your list of autocorrect options. So you could place the misspelled word or item here and then what you want to replace it with and then add that to your list and then as you're typing in your document it will auto correct for you. I'm going to cancel out of here for now and I'm going to click OK. All right, so now we have our document open and I'm going to go ahead and activate the editor. So this is not just your spelling and grammar check anymore, it's those refinements. So if you're used to using Grammarly or something like that, um, this is Microsoft's version of that that will check for all of those grammar refinements in your document. So if you're in Microsoft Word or Outlook, you're going to see the editor button here on your home ribbon. You also have the opportunity, if you want to, you can come over here to your quick access toolbar and customize it and you can add the editor icon up there in case you're used to going up there. If you used to have your spell check icon on your quick access toolbar, you can go up there and add the editor up there as well. So let's go ahead and click on editor and open it up.
This is going to scan our document for us and spit out an editor score. Editor score is going to look at all of the different suggestions in your document compared to the length of your document and give you a score. So if the score is pretty low, it just means that you have more suggestions and things to go through and check throughout your document. Underneath the editor score, you have a box where you can drop down and there's three different options. You have formal, professional, and casual. Formal is gonna be your strictest where it's gonna spit out the most suggestions for you and casual will have fewer suggestions. Again, if there are too many suggestions in the document, you can always go back into those grammar settings where we were before and uncheck some of those boxes that may not be as important for you to check on. I'm gonna leave this as formal so that we can take a look at this. All right, right now we don't have any spelling issues in our document. We have 17 different grammar suggestions. We simply click on this. It brings up a panel here that tells us what uh, the issue is in our document. There is an icon over here where you can press that and it will actually read the sentence for you. And sometimes that's helpful to hear it and you might hear what's wrong with the sentence and be able to fix it or have a good uh, pick one of the good suggestions that comes up in the editor. So if I want to, I can toggle, I can use these arrows up here to toggle to the next item. I can go back and forth and I can look at the different suggestions on all of the items that have been flagged by the editor. If I want to, I can come back out and then I can scroll down and look at all the different refinements. Notice under clarity, there are over a hundred items here. Again, this has to do with the fact that I have this set up to be a formal writing, so it's gonna find the most issues. And I also have almost all of those items in my grammar settings checked and enabled so that it's checking the document for all of those things. So um, again, you can adjust some of those settings if you if you want to. All right, notice down here that there is a resume item. So if this was were a resume document, it would give me some suggestions. Let's actually open up a sample resume and take a look at what this, the suggestions are. All right, here I have a sample resume and I'm gonna come up and click on editor. All right, the editor score is 77%. I've got formal writing here. I'm gonna change this to professional and I'm gonna check on any spelling and grammar issues. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna click on clarity. And it's giving me some suggestions to replace the word maintained with either kept or supported. So I can choose to either take these suggestions or not. Um, this is a great tool that helps go through your resume and gives you some of those items in grammar that will make your resume just more powerfully written. So this is a great tool to use. Uh, I would definitely suggest going through this with your resume document. Microsoft Editor is also available as a browser extension. So if you happen to use either Chrome or Edge, you're able to download Microsoft Editor to help you out. So if you click on download free for Chrome, it'll take you to a page where you can actually install it, follow the instructions and log in. Once you've installed it, you can come up here to your extensions, make sure that you have it pinned, turned on, and then you'll see it appear right up here on your browser. So the nice thing about having this as a browser extension is if you do a lot of posts, maybe on LinkedIn, maybe you use Gmail or Google Docs, you're able to use Microsoft Editor as your grammar for spell check and grammar, as well as those grammar refinements. Let's take a look at how this works on a LinkedIn post. So I'm going to actually do a post on LinkedIn and let's see what Microsoft Editor comes up with to show me as suggestions. All right, see how it underlined this area here? If I hover my mouse over this, it is going to let me know um, that I want to go ahead and click on this and it's saying that this term is overused and it has a suggestion for me to replace it with. So I'm going to go ahead and use that suggestion, or I could ignore it if I wanted to. So I'm gonna just click on try it. It replaces my text for me. It will update my LinkedIn post with the proper grammar and make it look more polished and professional. Don't forget to sign up for my email list with the link in the description below this video, and you'll get a free PDF of my business writing grammar tips. If you found this video helpful, be sure and give it a thumbs up to like it. You can subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. Be sure and visit my website, SharonSmithHR.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.